presented to us today, reminder about those, those uh, receptions and such. You can get credit for this class by attending a reception. Some of you probably did. Uh, last night, you have what you, what you must do is when you go to an event, an art event at the, at the North West Art Center, at the Talby, uh, for example, other places too, you, you write, you know, often we'll have just a book there, you write your name, and then write the section of your seminar. So you write 1AA, or 2AA, or 3AA, and then you get credit for this class uh, by attending those events. So, I got you. Last night, I didn't see a thing for us to check in when I came in at 6.30, but I did write my name in the like log for the gallery. Is that good? Okay, so what you should do in this situation, if you are at an event and you can't find a log book, take a cell phone picture of your, yourself or your at the event or your name in the book or something, or buy that to your as evidence to professor that you showed up at the event, uh, in the event that we wouldn't have the book out or whatever. For you to sign, so that that should do uh, for um, I think for most of the questions. Uh, I have uh, one thing that I kind of mentioned last time, and I know some of you didn't get to sign this. We had a great time at our party uh, last week, but again, um, I had this this little book uh, that we're giving to the family of Andrea Donovan, and I know some of you that have had her uh, in class that didn't have opportunity to sign this. So we're just going to kind of route this around and get passed around. And we're just asking that you just you know, sign your name uh, for any kind of comment or whatever to, to her family. And then we hope to give this to her family for this next week. So please, please take a moment for that. If you haven't already, if you've already signed, you can just pass it along. And uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for doing that. So I think you have certain much for you to do this. So you can just kind of maybe pass it along to others. And, uh, Phil. Could I just make an announcement? Yeah. Um, Carly yeah. and I have a clipboard. We have a clipboard, and we're gathering contact information for Art Club. So hold on. This doesn't mean if you sign on the dotted line that you're a member of Art Club and you're going to volunteer 96 hours a week. Okay? It just means we're going to contact you about Art Club. I do know that the account is flush, and that means a lot of food, a lot of pizza, and opportunity to have some fun, okay? As I was walking to class today, I was like, why don't we just go to Denny's and just say, we're ordering the menu, and just say everything on the menu and just blow it up big at Denny's. But anyway, um, we're gonna just pass this around. Don't you mean you're a member of our club? Just sign for contact, and we're, we're totally good. Like email or phone number? Could be either. Yep, whatever you're comfortable with. Could be email, could be phone number. And, and to remind you once again, um, Carly in the, the register, that's Carly, so that she's our point person for our club. So again, if you're interested in our questions, that's who you want to talk to. Wonderful. Well, uh, I think we're going to turn over here to Greg. He's going to move our guest. All right. Hi. A lot of you already might be familiar with our guest artist for this week. His exhibition opened uh, last night at the Northwest Art Center. Uh, but I'd like to take the time to introduce Don Kim. Um, so currently from <laughs> LA, recently from New Jersey, and originally from South Korea. He is an artist and fashion designer, uh, working predominantly in fabric, paper mediums, um, found materials. Um, he's going to be speaking with us today uh, concerning his work and his story. So I'd like to uh, give him a, a nice welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for uh, introducing me, Greg. Uh, thank you so much for having me uh, today, and I'm very thank you all for joining today. Um, um, uh, I think some of you, I saw you last night at the opening session. <laughs> thank you so much for joining last night. And okay, I want to thank. So I, I brought my script, so I will read. <laughs> Sorry for about my um, English. Okay, hello everyone. I'm very glad to meet you and thank you for joining today. Um, also huge thanks to uh, Northwest Art Center for giving me this wonderful, wonderful opportunity. My name is Dong Yu Kim and I was born and raised in South Korea. Uh, I'm a fashion designer and multimedia artist. I moved to the U.S. in 2007 
for my job and at the time I had a um, H-1B which is a contem uh, temporary working visa. Um, the collection of my expired uh, working visa, uh, you can check the, uh, all the collection at the, uh, my exhibition. And um, after uh, finishing my college in 2000, uh, I got my first job in Seoul and worked there for two years and moved to Mexico City for another two years and then moved to China. Um, in 2007, I moved to again to the U.S. I lived in New Jersey um, right next to Manhattan for uh, 14 years. Another again, I moved to LA, California last year for my job. So I worked um, internationally. Um, it was possible because of um, globalism, globalization uh, or neoliberalism. Um, um, that is the reason I'm very interested in economic structure. So because the um, economic structure influences a lot on in individual's life. Uh, I want to tell you a little bit about my um, full-time job. I'm uh, currently working for First Row Denim as a fashion director. Um, I want to play um, brand, uh, brand, uh, brand introduction video. Some of you watched already. Row Denim is a young man's street urban brand from LA. Our main target customer is a fashion forward African American. Uh, my brand has a small budget yet, so only three people work one salesman, that, and one general manager, and me. I'm, I'm an only designer, so I design all collections, including graphic, technical design. Um, we are wholesaler, so we sell to um, retailers like uh, small mom and pop boutiques, um, Fashion Nova, do you know Fashion Nova online? It's an online shopping mall and uh, DTLR, maybe Paco, <laughs> that um, the uh, uh, domestic uh, retail chain. So. Um, there is a couple of fashion trade shows and we have a chance to meet new buyers at the show. So it is important to join in the event to us. The biggest show is in Las Vegas. It is called Magic. It's a biannual show. Last August, we attend the show as an exhibitor. I will show you our booth display. So for the uh, for the uh, TV show, I painted uh, my logo on. Come back, come back. That is all my invention, and I decorated the cabinet. So it's my job to uh, build brand identity. We have a um, social media creator in my uh, office, so they do this kind of, they create this kind of video, like it's TikTok, it's no sound, so that's all my uh, fall collection for this year. So you can see my old collection at the um, 
our website that uh, first row Danim and also uh, you can check the our um, video at uh, Instagram or TikTok yeah <laughs> And then you can buy <laughs> my <laughs> clothing <laughs> through our website. So please go to www.firstrowdenim.com. <laughs> okay, uh, next is... So that, that was my everyday job to make money. And uh, next is um, about my art. You can see this artwork the unanswered questions number two 2018 uh, in my exhibition um, it is the uh, it is the hand quilted Korean groom's wedding attire this uh, work is composed of 880 individual receipts collected between 2009 and 2018 most, uh, mostly in Fort Lee New Jersey New York City and their vicinity um, I will show you two videos. Um, first one is how I fabricate with the paper receipts. I uh, hand quilted with paper resist and sweeper. You know the sweeper, the cleaning cloth. <laughs> yes, I quilt together to fabricate. This is the um, process to make fabric, and I usually listen uh, music or podcast during the process. Also, I think about um, what I'm doing, like the reason, um, I try to find out um, the reason of my activity, the why I create for this, something like that. And next one is after creating um, fabricate, uh, sorry. So this is the process of making hanbok, the traditional uh, Korean clothing. So I need some help from pattern maker, and I'm not good at pattern making, so I I had to hire a uh, freelancer for that. And another video to making up. It's not the same one at the gallery, but it is the uh, same kind of. So, do you want to see more and more time? Yeah. Do you ever run short on receipts and then have to go buy some more things to, to finish the project? No, I have. Plenty of. <laughs> <laughs> I have plenty of uh, uh, receipts um, because I collected um, every every single receipt from uh, ever since I moved moved in the U.S. from uh, uh, 2007. Have you ever made a piece strictly of uh, invoices from selling art? So it's selling like, art? Yeah, I it's like you make a piece out of. Invoices from selling art and then sell them. Yes, I <laughs> actually I sold uh, five of my artwork as I only <laughs> sell, um, and I got some you know, award paycheck from galleries, so I saved them for um, next project. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Okay. Uh, 
so uh, the material that I use for my art is very important to me. I've been uh, collecting all my paper receipts since I moved to the U.S. in 2007. Also, I collect shopping bags, letters, and envelopes from USA Labor and Immigrant Department. Um, recently, I started to collect my previous worn face mask from pandemic and create artwork with them. This is my um, uh, artwork named My Body is a Battleground number five. I hand it, hand quilted with them, uh, hand quilted them together to make one piece of shit and covered with clear vinyl. Mm. Next one is um, My Body is a Battleground number two. It is a 3D, uh, 3D printing portrait sculpture. The wrap is, and my head is made of elastic ear loops from the face mask. You can see the detail. Yeah, this is, th this is a uh, collection of ear loop from face mask. Uh, most of my materials are from my everyday life and it tells about me in many ways. Uh, it makes it easy to communicate with the viewers uh, because we share the same experience. You know, shopping and wearing masks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have difficulty to communicate with people bec sometimes because uh, English, English is my second language and there's in a language barrier. Another reason um, is that I'm an introvert person. Also, I'm not good at verbal expression, even in Korean. That is why I create my art. I want to tell my story, my feeling, and sometimes something that I cannot describe what it is. Um, so I can communicate with people through my visual language. So I'm an Asian uh, immigrant. Sometimes I feel I'm invisible because I live in very small uh, Korean community. So that's why I start to create art. Um, so I can get this kind of opportunity to share my uh, experience with American community. That's really great. <laughs> Um, next one is uh, the most famous stripes, number two. Um, you can see this work in the exhibition too. This work comprises um, elastic waistbands and white cotton fabric from men's underwear purchased at the Supreme Store in New York City. The cotton fabric and the waistbands which feature the red uh, Supreme logo have been hand stitched together. It made up all my manual um, hand stitching. So I will, I want to share the video, the process of making this flag. It is very time consuming process to hand stitching. Um, it it takes really really long time to stitching by hand so like oh so like this is the supreme uh elastic band from uh men's underwear so maybe some people want to know about supreme brand so so how many people know about this brand so, oh, <laughs> almo almost, almost of you know, already know about this brand. So, um, okay, it, uh, the Supreme is uh, American street and ca skate brand. It was very cool brand to young generation all over the world before pandemic. Now, um, I don't know, fashion market changes very, very fast. So what is, what is the popular, what is the most famous brand for now for your opinion Haynes Pink? No, Haynes 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 
A dead expression? <laughs> Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein? As it came back? <laughs> <laughs> it was a huge in, uh, in the 80s and 90s when I was in high school and college. But I don't know. But First row? I'm First row? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Ralph Lauren? Ralph Lauren? Yeah, Ralph Lauren came back. Yeah, come back. Yeah. So and, and in some ways, although they're, they're more, it was more about uh, um, leisure wear, uh, Tommy Hilfiger? Oh. Yeah, so yeah, pe uh, fashion changes very quickly, and some some of '90s fashion is come back. So, um, in 2018, supreme popularity was at peak. I started visiting a supreme store and purchased one item every week for one year, and I created my artwork with my shopping experience and materials such as paper receipts, promotional stickers, vinyl shopping bags, and more. Last February, um, I had a solo exhibition, Everything Must Go, at Marist College in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, the most famous stripes is one of them. So I will stop the video. It's, it's almost the same for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the most famous stripes number two. You can see this artwork at the Northwest Art Center. And this is the view. Uh, bless you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, everything must go. My solo exhibition at Myers College last February. Um, next one is Shave of You, number two. I got this, uh, this statue, Statue of Liberty from eBay. It was $2,500. <laughs> um, someone broke her arm. I poured in open storage, but someone uh, broke her arm um, but I decided to use it as it is sometimes some happen hap uh, you know sometimes some happening yet gave me a different perspective um, actually I enjoy that moment so I covered her um, her head with uh, supreme shopping bags and Next one is um, temporal, temporarily qualified number five from 2007 to 2019. Um, it is consists of 12 previously worn um, football jerseys and one vintage American flag. Also, I got them from eBay. They are all hand stitched together and printed my portraits from uh, my expired United States H-1B visas and New Jersey license, uh, New Jersey driver's licenses on the jerseys. The images span from 2007 to 2019, uh, when I was living in the U.S. as a temporarily, um, temporary immigrant worker before obtaining a green card in November 2019. So my works in my uh, exhibition tracks the onset of my immigration to America with a trail of collection of expired visa, driver's license, and paper receipts marked with the exact time, date, and location of nearly every purchase I have made since 2007. My work pauses the glorification of capitalistic consumerism through the myth of the American dream. Also, my works explore the transitioning paradigms of international labor, the collapse of neoliberalism, and what it means to be American now. Thank you so much for hearing. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We have questions for, for DK on cue. 
Um, we can ask them this time we got we got some time left. We can pick his brain about first row, about his fine art. Raise your hand. Stick him up. Okay. Oh, Peter. Go ahead. So like you like to put brain logos on your art mm -hmm. you sell them, right? Uh, I try to, but Oh, do you think Supreme is the amount of hmm? or no? Like Supreme would like you? No. No. <laughs> uh, I just had uh, I just had a, a, a public, you know, exhibition in Derry. I think they don't know about the exhibition. I really <laughs> want they know about my <laughs> exhibition. Yeah. Um, growing up, I know you like Calvin Klein and fashion. But what? When did you think that you? made the transition from like like when did you want to be an artist uh art um less um which came first fashion or art so in 2009 i joined some online club or like drawing club and i started to paint and something like that but i realized that I'm not good at painting and drawing so I tried to find 